since I last covered Intel, which was when CEO Lee Bhutan was appointed, deep and wide structural changes have happened at Intel. Computex 2025 has come and gone, and there were several interesting announcements from Team Blue. There are several positive indicators that make me feel confident about Intel's future. And a strong Intel will result in a more competitive environment in PCs, and ultimately better products at better prices for PC enthusiasts. Not all was positive though, and from the looks of things, I don't think Intel's competitors, particularly AMD, have anything to be worried about, at least in the short term. Before becoming a full-time content creator, I worked as an information architect where coding was a daily challenge. If only boot.dev existed back then, it would have made my life so much easier. Boot.dev is revolutionizing programming education through gamification. Imagine learning Python and Go not as a tedious task, but as an immersive online RPG where you complete daily coding quests, gain skills and experience points, and where your progress feels like leveling up in a game. One of my favorite things about Boot.dev is that it keeps you engaged while writing real code with an AI assistant called Boots, ready to help you when you are stuck, and an active Discord community for support. Learning becomes enjoyable and rewarding. According to Stack Overflow, back-end developers earn a medium salary over $100,000 per year, with many roles offering remote work flexibility. Boot.dev is your pathway to unlocking these opportunities. Want to test the waters? There's a free demo for each course. And here's the best part. You can use my coupon code CORTEX to get 25% off your entire first year if you choose the annual plan. Upgrade your abilities by clicking in the link in the description and start your programming quest with boot.dev. One of the most exciting announcements coming from Intel was, of course, Panther Lake, their next generation of client CPUs featuring Cougar Lake P cores and Darkmont E cores, built on Intel's 18A process node. Unfortunately, as rumors had been suggesting for some time, Panther Lake will be mobile only, so no Core 300 desktop series based on this new microarchitecture. From that, we can infer that Arrow Lake, the current microarchitecture, should see a refresh at some point this year. Panther Lake is scheduled to be released early next year and Intel already had several laptops running Panther Lake chips with some interesting AI applications demoed, of which a new version of DaVinci Resolve caught my eye. Anything that can help speed up video editing is very welcome as I absolutely hate editing. One of the important changes is that Intel is working with ISVs like Blackmagic, who make DaVinci Resolve, to move some of the work to the NPU. NPUs on desktop CPUs have been mostly dark silicon, taking up space and doing absolutely nothing. Intel is one of the few companies that has the expertise and experience doing co-design with software vendors that can accelerate these AI workloads via specialized silicon in a deeply integrated way that honestly other hardware makers might struggle to mimic. You might remember how Intel's QuickSync brought substantial benefits to video editing in particular. So so hardware and software co-design is one area where Intel still has a word to say compared to AMD and Nvidia. Now looking at the chip that Intel showed, we see two large tiles of silicon, which should be the graphics and the SOC, and then the smaller two could be the compute tile with the CPU cores and the I.O. die. Then there's a small bit of silicon in the corner, which is probably for structural integrity, so it's just dummy silicon. This is a new configuration, and it's definitely disappointing that Intel is not releasing new socketable desktop chips based on Panther Lake, especially as AMD has been kicking their ass in several workloads, particularly in gaming on the desktop. There was also no information on Nova Lake. I'm hoping that the Arrow Lake refresh will also benefit from the hardware software co-design that Intel showed for Panther Lake at this Computex. As good as Panther Lake could be, most people won't be choosing laptops for video editing workstations or for gaming-focused PCs that's for sure. Still, nowadays, laptops is where the money is for hardware makers, so when it comes to consumer CPUs, it's no surprise that this is Intel's main focus, unfortunately for us PC enthusiasts. It's great for Intel as a company to be launching Panther Lake so soon. Their financials will definitely benefit from all those enterprise sales especially. A super interesting demo that Intel showed was an AI coach that overlays on top of games and gives you guidance as you progress, in this case in black 
Black Myth Wukong. Overlaying a map to where treasures are as you enter a new section, and a video guide that pops up to help defeat a boss. While it might be a bit controversial to be schooling gamers on how to progress in a game like this, the point that I think is relevant is, again, the hardware slash software co-design and the unique ability that Intel has to take advantage of their hardware blocks, what they call tiles, so that new accelerators in these desegregated SOCs don't end up being unused. And Intel confirmed that this was something developed in collaboration with Wukong's developers. I reviewed Mini's forum's excellent AI Pro Mini PC a couple of months ago and was really disappointed to see that not a single AI application I tested made use of the NPU present in the AMD SoC that ships with that device, even in AMD's own in-house applications. In a world where reviewers mostly just test Cinebench and other traditional multi-core renderers, as we see new hardware blocks like the NPU being put to use, benchmarking will need to be revised, as buyers should be informed that a specific chip might actually be faster and a workload that's relevant to them, even if that chip loses in something like Cinebench. Also worthy of note is that Panther Lake features a new XE3 Celestial iGPU, so it will be interesting to see if these chips can compete with AMD's APUs and give us some interesting updated handheld gaming PCs that can compete in particular with AMD's impressive Ryzen Z2 Extreme, which was shown at Computex on the new MSI Claw 8 AI+. Intel also introduced the new 200V series laptops, so those are based on Lunar Lake, the current mobile-focused microarchitecture. On show was, for instance, the Predator Triton 14 AI from Acer, featuring a Core Ultra 9 288V, along with an RTX 5070 and a high-refresh OLED panel. What's interesting here is that this is a 125-watt laptop, so these 200V series allow for air size to create these laptops with really high performance and specs in a low wattage package without gimping the GPU, for instance. So if we compare Intel versus AMD's offerings for gaming, AMD's 9955HX3D is currently the fastest mobile processor, outperforming Intel's Core Ultra 9 285HZ by anywhere between 5% to 44%, kind of like what we see on the desktop. Of course, we don't know how good Panther Lake H will be, but I think it's unlikely it will be 40% faster versus Lunar Lake or Arrow Lake. So I think AMD will still lead next year. They don't even need to launch new chips. As for the low power stuff, the Ryzen Max Plus 395 will have better multi-core performance than the 288V. I mean, it's 32 threads on the AMD chip versus 8 threads on the Intel one. And the AMD chip has higher memory support for the new wave of mini PCs for AI. And it has stronger integrated graphics. So Intel's only saving grace is their vast experience working with AIBs and SIs, which could allow them to make use of things like the NPU and get ahead that way, at least in a few select workloads. When it comes to raw performance, though, I didn't see anything from Intel that even remotely threatens AMD's currently performance dominance. But it should be noted that in the mobile segment, raw performance is generally not the deciding factor for purchases. Things like battery life, build quality and stability matter just as much as performance, if not more. Now, one announcement that I think caught people off guard was Project Battle Matrix. A few days ago, when I covered AMD's keynote, I talked about AMD's new Threadrippers and the new Radeon AI Pro R9700 GPU. And AMD even showed on stage a workstation featuring this combination. Well, Intel's Project Battle Matrix is precisely targeting the same audience, with up to eight Intel Arc Pro GPUs in a single workstation for a total of 192 gigabytes of VRAM. The workstation that AMD showed featured four Radeon Pro R9700s for a total of 128 gigabytes of VRAM, so lower capacity than what Intel is offering here, which is certainly relevant for the target audience. The target audience being those doing inference. In the past, we've had graphics workstations for those doing CAD work or 3D modeling and rendering. And now both AMD and Intel are offering these new inference workstations. The idea being that you can scale up GPU memory bandwidth to serve up very large language models. So in theory, if you are looking to say develop your own video game, you can use a coding AI agent rather
running locally on these workstations to help you code the game. Even if you only have a basic understanding of coding or of how to use an engine like Unity, such an AI agent running locally could even debug the game for you as you encounter bugs. This would require a model to be fine-tuned to run on a specific coding pipeline and it probably would not work in an ecosystem like UE5, but it's an interesting possibility that could free up resources for individuals and indie developers and really speed up game development. As for the new Arc B60 cards, each features 24GB of VRAM and these are essentially based on the consumer variant the B580 launched a few months back. But what's interesting here is that these can be configured as a pair of GPUs on a single card, like this awesome dual GPU card from Maxon. So you get a total of 48 gigabytes of VRAM on one of these cards. The workstation that Intel showed is kinda insane, considering you can run this off of a wall socket in your home. Intel is also letting AIBs make their own versions of these cards, including some passively cooled ones. And this is smart thinking on Intel's part because the AI environment isn't really strictly defined yet. Some users might need smaller, passively cooled cards, others blower style cards for rack mounting, etc. Again, we come back to the one advantage that Intel still holds versus AMD and Nvidia, that ability to collaborate deeply with partners and create these co-designs for a whole new segment now. For comparison, Nvidia's RTX 6000 ADA with 48 gigabytes of VRAM, which has been the go-to for these sorts of workloads, costs between $5,500 and $6,000, and these dual B60s should cost around $800. To me, this was Intel's most interesting announcement for sure, especially as they've been heavily invested in creating a software stack for AI for several years now. Now, the biggest disappointment from Intel at this year's Computex was the fact that Intel did not announce the B770 gaming GPU, despite having teased an announcement before Computex started. At least we know the card is in active development and should be released by Q4 this year, so in a few months' time. The card is rumored to have 32 XE2 cores versus the 20 found on the entry-level B580 that Intel has currently on the market, and it should have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So at worst, this should be around the level of a 5060 Ti, or AMD's recently announced 9060 XT. But given the specs, I think it could actually be a bit faster than that, maybe around the RTX 4070 or the Radeon 7800 XT. Considering how aggressive Intel has been with pricing, if this launches at, say, $350, we could finally have a proper 70-class card at less than $400 on the market. Maybe that's wishful thinking, but one can hope. Beyond all of these announcements from Intel at Computex, the new CEO, Leap Bhutan, has been busy restructuring Intel. One of the key changes that previous CEO Pat Gelsinger wasn't keen on enacting was leaning Intel's bloated employee base. Leap Bhutan has committed to laying off at least 20% of Intel's global workforce, with an emphasis on reducing middle management and empowering engineers, the plan being removing bureaucratic workflows that was slowing down innovation inside Intel. During Computex, Lip Bhutan held an event to celebrate their 40-year presence in Taiwan, and Tan told partners that he's now personally going down several layers in the company's structure to get reports directly from engineers, and wants to start delivering the best products on each segment that Intel covers. So he's aiming for the best CPUs and the best GPUs in the coming years. The fact that he is committed to Taiwan, as he said, meaning TSMC, is indicative of how pragmatic he is in implementing this strategy of less promises and better execution, whatever it takes. If it means shifting more products to TSMC, I think Intel will do it, whatever it takes to beat AMD and Nvidia. And that's exactly the Intel that we need. We need Intel to recognize that they are now the underdog and need to act as such and do whatever it takes to bring to market the best products. It's going to take time, 
obviously, given all the stagnation we saw under the previous leaderships, but I'm hopeful for Intel's return to form and to what that will mean for competition within the PC enthusiast segment in particular, and that could start in just a few months with the launch of the B770. Now, there is another wave of disruption coming from new players in the semiconductor industry that I think is flying under the radar and which I think could reshape the whole industry in the coming decade. But that's for an upcoming video. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. A big thanks to my awesome patrons for their continued support. Join my Patreon for a couple of dollars per month and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server. And please share this video on your socials as that really helps my channel grow. Thanks for watching and until the next one.